Hi, Anne here from Backroad Buddies, and the video we want to share with you today is about additional backpacking gear. Now this is the third video of three. The first one was on the 10 essentials. The second video was on additional uh, hiking gear, which we take on day hikes. And then this third video covers gear above and beyond the 10 essentials and our hiking gear that we take on overnight backpacking trips. Now first just a little disclaimer. We've done a lot of hiking, a few backpacking trips, but by no means are we hiking experts, outdoor survival experts, nor medical personnel. So take what we say with a grain of salt and do your own research, but we are just sharing what we do so hopefully it'll be helpful for you. <laughs> if you want or just interested in a couple areas or a couple items you can look in the description and there's a timeline so you can jump right to a particular item right to a particular area that you're interested in instead of going through the whole video if you so choose. Additional backpacking gear. Now backpacking is very similar to hiking except you plan on spending the night out on the trail. So you need some additional gear above and beyond the 10 essentials and your hiking gear. So backpacking item one is a backpacking tent and ground cloth. Um, you're intending to spend the night so you want to be a little more comfortable than an emergency bivy. So you carry it, you, it's worth the weight and bulk of carrying a tent. Now this is probably, I think, the only item that we don't each have our own uh, equipment for. So we share a two-person tent between the two of us to save a little bulk and weight. Now there's a little bit of a safety concern there because if we accidentally get separated, only one of us and we actually kind of split it up so neither one of us would actually have a backpacking tent because some of us would have the one of us would have the poles the other would have the actual tent or or however we decided to split it up um, but we both still have our emergency shelters so it's not quite a real safety concern but I mean if you want to make sure each person has their own backpacking tent you can do that as well but keep in mind that's going to add a little more weight and bulk if everybody has their own, depending on what size and what type of tent you get. Um, make sure you know how to set it up. Make sure that it still works because our last backpacking trip we discovered that our backpacking tent was no longer waterproof and water was dripping in all the seams. Luckily we had that um, emergency tarp that Keith was carrying and we were able to drape that over our tent and keep ourselves dry because temperatures were getting kind of cold at night. So it all worked out but yeah, our recommendation is to, you know, especially if it, that tent's been sitting around for a few years, to make sure that it's still watertight. So backpacking item two is an inflatable sleeping pad. Now you could go and do um, I think there's like open cell pads or closed cell pads. Um, we're both side sleepers, so we actually prefer the inflatable. We find that more comfortable. Now, this is a uh, Thermarest Neo Air, and I think it's the wide and long, maybe just the long. And it rolls up pretty small. It inflates pretty quickly. You just basically blow it up. The only part about it we don't like is how noisy it is. I don't know if you can hear that's coming across, but every time you roll over, especially, you know, at night when it's nice and quiet out, it sounds like you're crinkling up a potato chip bag or something. Now, Thermarest um, claims their latest version of this pad is much quieter, so Hopefully that's true because, yeah, this is rather noisy, but it is very comfortable. We like sleeping on it. Um, kind of the hint of inflatables is, I think when I was younger and we used to have, you know, air mattresses at home, we always thought you had to like blow it up fully so it was 
really nice and firm, but we don't find that to be the most comfortable. You kind of want to find that right balance of letting out enough air so you kind of sink down into it and it kind of forms to the contours of your body, but not so much that your hip is actually touching the ground. So you kind of have to figure that out a little bit where that comfortable point is. But we find it nice and comfortable. And we've taken this on, um, let's see, three backpacking trips now. Uh, two, two of them were three days long, two nights, and one was five days long, four nights. And we've never had a leak, although um, you probably want to make sure you take a little repair kit with you just in case because if it leaks and you're laying on the ground, that's not going to be very comfortable. Um, but yeah, we're happy with the, these so far. Backpacking item three is a sleeping bag or sleeping quilt. Keith uses a mummy sleeping bag. I think this is by Sierra Designs. It's a Zizu 15 long, 600 fill down, 15 degree bag. So this is down filled. Um, and it's a mummy style. So it kind of comes up around you. I don't find mummy sleeping bags very comfortable. I just feel like I it's hard to roll over in them and I'm just not comfortable with them. So I actually use what's called a quilt. And now this is also down filled. Um, I think it's like a 800, whatever that may, rating <laughs> means, but it's a, only a 20 degree bag, I think. Um, and this is from Enlightened Equipment. And it's pretty much a big rectangle. But the toe box does kind of um, snap up and cinch up so you can kind of close up the foot of the bag. And you kind of wrap this around your sleeping pad so that it comes with these little elastic straps that kind of go under the sleeping pad so it kind of holds it tight in. Um, and I find that very comfortable. And the whole idea is the down that's underneath you in a sl regular sleeping bag isn't really doing you any good because you squash it flat and there's no insulation value to that at all. So why put the material underneath you? But I just find it more comfortable. I feel like I can roll around and move and I'm just more comfortable with a quilt. Now you just wanna make sure that use and they come this is not exactly a compression sack but it fits in this bag when it squishes all down um, keith actually uses a real compression sack where you can kind of cinch it down to pretty small size to go in your pack but when you store it at home you want to store it out so it kind of keeps its loft you don't want to keep it or store it squished down you want to um, store it so it can kind of air out and breathe and be fluffy. <laughs> Backpacking item four is an inflatable pillow. Now you could, you know, roll up a shirt or a jacket or something and use that as a pillow when you're backpacking. But we find these inflatable pillows to be very comfortable and worth the little extra space and weight. They roll up pretty small. They're pretty light. Um, but we find they are just really really comfortable to sleep on. So we always take these with us. Backpacking item five is something clean and dry to sleep in. So we don't like sleeping in our hiking clothes. They're damp with sweat. They aren't the most comfortable things <laughs> to sleep in anyway. So we'll usually bring something to change into to sleep in a night. It may be something as simple as a t-shirt, spandex, shorts, um, we generally also make sure we have a spare, clean, dry pair of socks for night because it always seems like your toes get cold, don't it? Well, especially me. <laughs> um, but depending on the weather, it might be something a little more, maybe some leggings or a long sleeve, um, thin long sleeve t-shirt, or um, if it's really cold, like long underwear. 
So it all depends on the weather, but just have something different than what you're hiking in to sleep in a night and you'll feel so much better. <laughs> Backpacking item six is a backpacking stove and fuel canister. Um, so this is the fuel canister. I forget how many ounces this is. Oh, my glass is on 7.4 ounces. And I think this is a mixed fuel. This is MSR Isopro. But anyway, that's the fuel for the stove. And this, believe it or not, is the actual stove. It's really small. It's fairly inexpensive and very lightweight and of course now I got a tangle and it kind of unfolds here I'll show you how this works maybe and then take this little cap off and this just screws on top of the little fuel canister And then your pot will rest right on those little feet there. And it's surprisingly stable for such a small little thing. And then this is used to control the fuel. And then you just light it with a little lighter or match or something. So we really like these. We've used these for all three of our trips. Haven't really had an issue with the stoves themselves. We've had an issue with a canister or two. But since we each have one with us that we have a backup to rely on. But um, we like having a stove with us because in the evenings we like to have a hot meal and in, for breakfast we like to have a hot meal when we're backpacking. It just makes you feel better than always having cold food all the time. And then you can also use this as a yet another way to purify your water is boiling water if you have a stove with you. Backpacking item seven is a little um, butane lighter. I know I listed this in the 10 essentials under fire, but we may or may not always have a lighter with us, even though we might have other ways of starting a fire. And we mainly do this because we find this is the easiest way to light that um, backpacking stove. You could use a match, it would be really hard to use the magnesium striker to do that. So um, we, if we're doing backpacking, we want to make sure that we each have a, a little lighter to use with our stove. Backpacking item eight is backpacking cookware. So you've got the stove, now you need something to cook it in. So we actually carry, um, each one of us has a pot to cook food in kind of a metal cup to boil water for drinks in, and a uh, long-handled utensil, it's a spork, to be able to stir the food, eat with. So that's basically all our cookware, dinnerware, whatever you want to call it. Now, for some reason, <laughs> Even though we both have a large pot and a kind of a cup to cook in, we have four different sizes. I'm not quite sure why something came in a set or we disagreed on what size to get. I don't know. Um, so one of us has, let me get my glasses so I can figure this out. So this is an 1100 milliliter. You know, it's got nice little handles on there plus a little handle on top and then the cup is a, in this case, is a 450 liter. And there's little um, measurements along the side, so if you need to measure something out, you can do that. Um, and both of them have lids. Oops, that's not the lids to that one. Okay, they have little lids with a little kind of pull handle on them. Now, when you put these on the backpacking stove, most of this gets pretty hot. Um, but I'll show you how we deal with that later. So they both have lids. Um, so here's the other set. This is a 550 milliliter that's used as a 
cup for hot drinks and um, a 900 milliliter pot for cooking food in. Now in addition we each have our own sporks. See it's a nice long handle so you can stir the hot food in there. Um, one of these is from Vault Can and it's kind of got a little polish bowl. I think this one's titanium and this one might be aluminum I think. This is a Sea to Summit. Um, the Vulcan came with a nice little carrying bag. The Sea to Summit didn't, so I just found a little kind of stuff sack thing to store it in. Oh, and we also bought these little um, lips protect little protection thing because these do get hot and if you're drinking out of it it can be a little hot but we didn't really end up using these so that was kind of a waste of money. Now these pots are titanium so they're a little pricey they're by Tokes um, but they are really lightweight and they work really well. We haven't had any issues with them. The one set is nice because the uh, fuel canister will sit down in there and then I we also store the little stove and Bic lighter and that part that we don't use and so that all can fit in all nested together in a nice small little compartment unfortunately because this cup is a smaller diameter the fuel canister won't fit in there but at least I can get the the stove in there and the lighter in there as well. A backpacking item nine is two bandanas. So that kind of alludes to kind of what I was talking about dealing with the hot pots a minute ago. Now we carry two each person. So one we use to dry off our dishes, pots and pans. And then the other one we use for our bodies. So in addition to wearing it during the day for, like I was saying in my um, hiking gear, we use a bandana to wet down and wipe our bodies down at night before we go to bed. That just, that's so refreshing to get kind of all the stickies off of you <laughs> from the day. And that does wonders to your comfort level when you're backpacking. So keep them straight though. One for your body, one for the dishes. Don't mix them up. You don't want, you know, your sweat on your dishes. Um, and then also for in, when you have hot pots, you can use a bandana like a hot pad and keep from burning your hands. Backpacking item 10 is hot drinks. So we like to have hot drinks with us when we're on the trail. It just, especially if it's cold at night or in the morning, it just feels much nicer. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but Keith is. So we keep it simple. Keith likes these um, Starbucks via instant. So it's just a little packet. You just add hot water, boiling water to and voila, you have coffee. And then um, I, I like to bring along the uh, instant hot chocolate. So again, just add, you know, it's just a packet. Just add the boiling water. And then I also usually bring some tea bags of different flavors of tea that I like. So that kind of rounds out all the hot drinks we bring with us. Backpacking item 11 is dinner food. So, I mean, you can buy backpacking meals. They're rather expensive. We found it's much more economical and I don't know if it's any less nutritious or not. Is We've kind of discovered, well, I shouldn't say we discovered it. We, I'm sure we picked it up from somewhere out from somebody else, but there's, um, if you go, just go to the grocery store. There's a brand called Knorr. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And they have these um, pasta and rice sides of all different kinds of flavors. And so we usually take one of those packets 
for a meal, either that or Idahoan. Kind of has these little uh, potato, different flavored potatoes. And we find those work out pretty well. They take, you know, they relatively quick to cook. So it's probably like 10 or 15 minutes to a boil in a pot. And they, each one of these packets makes a nice meal, especially if you add in some protein. You can buy um, chicken or tuna in a little pouch that doesn't need refrigeration. So you can take those along and add the protein to that um, potato, pasta, rice side. And that makes a really nice filling meal. And then for dessert, we usually bring along, I don't know if it's called Laura Bars, Lara Bars, however you pronounce that. Um, but they have some really just wonderful little um, flavors. This one happens to be a blueberry muffin. And they're just really tasty. Um, nice little sweet little treat on the trail. And when we plan out how many or how much of this food we're bringing, so it's one of these packets and a protein packet per meal and a Lara bar per meal. And we will take along one extra meal than what we plan to be on trail just in case we don't make it back in, in the time that we think we're going to. So the number of evening meals we plan to be on trail plus one. Backpacking item 12 is breakfast food. So we like to have hot breakfasts on trail as well, but we keep it simple. So we usually get, you know, the little Quaker instant oatmeal packets. And then I'll add um, some dried fruit, like dried blueberries or dried cherry. And if we happen to have some um, nuts with us, I may add nuts in there as well. So just a nice little warm breakfast. And then of course we can have tea or hot chocolate or coffee or whatever to go along with it. So again, I take the number of oatmeal packets for the number of breakfasts where we plan to be on trail plus one. Again, just to have that extra food. Backpacking item 13 is a bear bag. Now you could use a bear bag or a bear canister. Um, some people say that a bear canister is much more bear proof than a bear bag. Uh, We've just always had a bear bag. Maybe we'll switch to a canister sometime. But a canister is heavier, it's a little bulkier, but it is more bear proof. Now, a bear bag is important, even if there aren't bears in the area, but in most parts of this country there are bears, believe it or not. Um, but this also protects against other critters, you know, like mice and squirrel from getting to your food. So you want to put all your food in here and any other smelly items like deodorant, toothpaste, um, anything that has an odor that might attract animals, you want to put in your bear bag. And so you um, seal it up and then you'll need a, uh, this, we call it our little rock bag. It's just a little kind of, stuff sack and then we have a rope and a carabiner so we'll put something heavy in our little rock bag like rocks and tie it all up so you can sling the rock bag over a branch in a tree hoist up the uh, bear bag to get it up off the ground to get it away from critters especially bears and you want to do that a, a good distance away from your tent. You never want to take food or um, any of those smelly items into your tent or near your tent because that will attract animals. So you want to make sure you stay safe that way. Kind of along those same lines, um, we originally both had these. These are, um, I forget what they're called. They're basically bags that supposedly hold the odors in. So you could put all your stuff in here before you put it in the bear bag and that should um, keep the odors from attracting animals to begin with. Um, I think Keith lost his or something so <laughs> the last trip he didn't use one but I did. So I don't know how much this really helps or not but we bought it so I used it. 
Backpacking item 14 is toothbrush and toothpaste. So uh, we just go to the grocery store, find the little sample toothpaste tubes, something nice and small. Again, you're backpacking. You want it small, light as possible. We found these um, little toothbrushes that are kind of compact. Um, some people just take a regular toothbrush and just cut it in half. You don't really need a real long handle anyway. Um, but again, you know, small and light is what you're looking for. Backpacking item 15 is a hairbrush and comb. Now, Keith just takes a normal little men's comb or whatever you call that. And I actually found, I mean, because I like using a brush instead of a comb on my hair. As I found this little compact thing, it folds up really small. And then you just kind of put, I don't know if you can see that, you just kind of push the bristles out. And then this other part is kind of the handle. And you kind of have to, it keeps kind of collapsing. So it's not the most ideal brush in the world, but it is small and compact, which is what you want backpacking. So I thought, it's got a little mirror on there too, but it works. Backpacking item 16 is a battery bank. So remember, we're relying on our cell phones for navigation. Uh, and that's the main thing for the cameras. I usually bring enough spare batteries to last me through a backpacking trip because some of my recharging requires an AC. But for our cell phones, we can use what's called a battery bank. This one's by Anchor, I think it is. Um, I'll put a link to it in our blog post. And it's got a little USB. So you use a little USB cable to hook it up to whatever you want to recharge and it'll so this is just basically a big battery and you can charge up your phones with it so you need to make sure you fully charge this before you leave on your backpacking trip and the last um, we went uh, three days and we had this with us and it I think we only depleted about half of the power out of this and we were mainly just charging our cell phones. We weren't really charging anything else with it. Um, the in-reach batteries usually can last for quite a few days, so that wasn't an issue. It was mainly our cell phones that would get a little low and we would use this to recharge. Backpacking item 17 is a waterproof liner. So this is for inside our backpacks to keep things dry. Now they do make liners that you can buy specific for backpacks, but we just use a compactor trash bag and uh, that seems to work fine. It's probably a little cheaper. Unfortunately, you can't usually normally just buy one. You have to buy a whole package, but um, it works very well. So we put our sleeping bags in here, our clothes in here, anything else that we wanted to make sure stay dry put it in there, just roll it down, and that would be in the bottom of our packs and to make sure that those stay dry because that could be an issue when you get to camp and find out that, oh, you know, it rained on us. I thought I had that, you know, backpack cover on, but that didn't really keep things dry in there. So um, it's important to keep some of those items dry so you can stay warm at night. Backpacking item 18 is alcohol swabs. Now this may sound like a weird one, but a lot of people say you shouldn't use deodorant when you're backpacking because it'll attract animals. Well, that's not too much of an issue for me because I'm allergic to antiperspirant. So I normally use isopropyl alcohol anyway as deodorant, um, which I don't think really has any kind of odor at all. When I'm not on the trail, I use a little spray bottle as a deodorant. But on trail, I didn't want to take a little spray bottle. I was concerned about it leaking or breaking or smashing or something. So instead, I carry alcohol swabs. So I just use a little alcohol swab as kind of my deodorant. 
I mean, these are also handy as first aid items to clean out wounds or to clean off a surface you're trying to repair and put tape on. So there's a lot of uses for alcohol swabs other than deodorant, but that's the main reason I bring them along. <laughs> Backpacking item 19 is petroleum jelly and zinc oxide. Now you're probably saying, what do you bring those along for? Well, when you go on long hikes, especially when you're carrying heavy packs, things rub. Skin gets irritated and it can get quite painful sometimes. The first time I, um, I went backpacking, we were three days on the Appalachian Trail, and my hiking pants rubbed the, my inner thighs and created a very painful rash. And I found that petroleum jelly works really well at reducing the friction and reducing those rashes or sores from developing. But what worked on getting it to heal once you had a painful rash was zinc oxide ointment. And that really seems, it's what I found works the best to heal that stuff fast, like overnight. So. I don't backpack without these and actually I carry these in our RV as well because you get those skin irritations and that can be really turn a wonderful hike or backpacking trip into very painful ordeal so I don't go on a backpacking trip without these anymore. Backpacking item 20, stadium chairs. Now this is a luxury item. We only did this on the last um, backpacking trip. We didn't do it on the other ones. But a lot of times when you set up camp, there's really a, not a good comfortable place to sit. You might be able to find a log or a rock or something, but a lot of times you're just sitting on the ground. Um, so having those stadium chairs was just a luxury comfort item. They the ones we have are from Crazy Creek, so they roll up pretty nice and we can kind of lash them to the outside of our packs so they're not taking up space inside the pack. I mean, yeah, they add some weight, but the comfort they give you for at camp is, to us, it was worth it. We enjoyed taking them along. Backpacking item 21 is sport sandals. This, again, is another luxury item. These are quite heavy. But again, I can lash them to the outside of the pack. Now, this is something I only did the last backpacking trip we did, and that was because I knew we had a water crossing kind of near on the first day, and temperatures were going to get close to freezing at night. I wanted to make sure I didn't get my hiking boots wet, and I really don't like doing water crossings in my bare feet. So, I brought these along. Keith did not, so he just managed to make the crossings without getting his boots wet, but you know, you're balancing on slippery rocks, and plus his hiking boots are waterproof, mine are not, so there's kind of a debate on there whether you should have waterproof hiking boots or not, but my feet sweat enough anyway that it's going to get damp inside, but anyway, I didn't want to be soaking wet, so I found having these was really nice for water crossings but what I even almost liked even better about these was once we got to camp I could take my hiking boots off put these on I could even leave my socks on you know if it was cool enough that I wanted to leave those on my feet aired out and breathed and it was just so nice to get those hiking boots off and I just found having these at camp was really a, a nice comfort item but again it's a luxury item because these are heavy so it's got to be worth the wait to you. Backpacks. So we gave you these long lists of gear and you're probably thinking, well, what did you carry all that in? So we actually have three different backpacks depending on what we're doing. The first one, if we're going on a short hike and we only need like one liter of water and we don't necessarily need all our 10 essentials, it's, you know, either a stroll around town or it's a trail that's you know, near civilization and you're not really going out remote or anything. We'll carry these, um, they're called flash packs by REI. They're only 22 liter capacity, but they're nice and light. They don't weigh a whole lot, just the pack itself. And so these are nice to have on those 
nice short hikes where you don't need to carry a lot of weight. So we each have one. Now when we're going on a longer hike where we need, you know, two liters of water or more, or we need a lot of heavy gear, um, and we want to make sure we have our 10 essentials with us, we'll actually move up to our medium-sized pack. These are Ospreys. They are 24 liters capacity. So they really aren't that much bigger capacity-wise. But if you notice, they have a lot more padding they have a nice thick um, waist belt, so you can comfortably carry a lot more weight with these, even though the packs themselves are somewhat heavy. But it's a much more comfortable pack. So if we've got the weight, we'll go to these on longer hikes. Now if we're going backpacking, we need to carry a lot more gear with us, so that 24 liter capacity isn't gonna work. So we actually have much larger packs to go backpacking with. I think the one Keith used last time was this Osprey 50 liter pack. And then um, I have a Gregory, I think this is a 55 liter pack. So much larger capacity, almost well, more than twice what our medium sized day packs haul so we can carry a lot more gear in these. Now we hope all this gear didn't scare you. <laughs> we just want to make sure you're prepared because you never know. Um, a friend of ours actually had to be airlifted off of um, a mountain for a um, backpacking trip and he was an experienced backpacker. He wasn't really doing anything dangerous. He just, you know, moved the wrong way, hurt his back, and had to be airlifted out. So you never know when emergencies might arise and what gear you might need to help survive. So we hope that it helped you that way, but um, don't let that scare you off from hiking or backpacking. It's a lot of fun, and having all that gear with you um, Hopefully it's not too much weight, but that's the balance you kind of have to play is how much weight do I want to or can I carry versus what kind of risk am I taking if I don't carry that gear with me. So that's a decision you kind of have to find the balance yourself, but we hope you have fun and we hope you get out there. Well, that's all we have for you. Hopefully some of that information was helpful to you. Um, if you have some other suggestions of gear or what we may be missing or what you know or you have some opinions on some of the things we put in there please leave a comment below and let us know so uh, hopefully you enjoyed this thanks for watching if you want more details look in the description below for a link to our related blog post so check that out and if you haven't already please subscribe we'd really appreciate it Ta-ta for now.